So, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world at the moment. Um, welcome to, I don't know, is this going to be the first session? This is a, this is a recorded session, so uh, uh, welcome to our panel discussion on uh, the joys of VLOOKUP. Uh, with us today, we have uh, Liam Bastic, Oz de Soleil, Joe McDade, and Charles Williams, who will uh, be advocating or detracting from the use of VLOOKUP. Um, each person is going to have a chance to say their piece uh, for or against. Um, they're going to have somewhere between two to four minutes, possibly five minutes, depending on how we go. Um, and uh, they're going to get a chance in uninterrupted to be able to say their piece on what they think about VLOOKUP. Um, and then what we'll do is go into a bit more of a uh, free for all discussion. Um, if people have prepared anything, um, they're more than welcome to show it. Otherwise, um, yeah, I'm sure uh, Liam, Charles, Joe, or Oz uh, can whip together some quick examples uh, on the fly. Um, now, I believe Liam has a couple of slides just to show if you've been living under a rock and you have no idea what VLOOKUP is. Um, first of all, I'm not exactly sure why you're attending this session. Um, secondly, um, I'm not exactly sure if you've uh, uh, if how you're going to feel about the rest of the Excel sessions and whether uh, some of those are going to go over your head. Uh, but certainly, uh, if you if you've not uh, used VLOOKUP or you're not sure how VLOOKUP works, um, first thing we probably uh, want to get across is how it actually works. So, Liam, are you going to share something? I am, although part of me wants to think perhaps I don't. If you don't know how VLOOKUP works, then congratulations. Feel free to miss the rest of this session. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, is already shaking. That's how yeah. it's going to go today. OK, <laughs> let me let me just share my screen and prove my ineptness. Um, my, there we go. So I don't know, might, might read it. I'll try and read it out neutrally. Searches for a value in the leftmost column of a table and then returns a value in the same row from a column you specify in the table. So not trying to put any sort of uh, positive or negative. This is uh, one up taken from the old help for VLOOKUP. And it gives you a definition of the four arguments. Lookup value, which is the value to be found in the first column of the array, it can be a value, a reference, or a text string. Table array is a table of information in which the data is looked up. Column index number is the column number in table array form when the matching value must be returned. Uh, and, so, and range lookup is a logical value that specifies where you want the lookup to find an exact match or an approximate match. And there was a second page of it. So the values in the first column of table array can be text numbers or values, as it said before. If range lookup is true, the values in the first column of table array must be placed in ascending order. And uh, it says minus two, minus one, zero, one, two, etc. Otherwise, H lookup or V lookup, uh, uh oh, there's an error. Uh, otherwise, V lookup uh, may not give the correct value. The wonders of recording this live. If range lookup is false, uh, table array does not need to be sorted, uppercase and lowercase text are equivalent. If column index number is less than one, VLOOKUP returns hash value. If column index number is greater than the number of columns in table array, VLOOKUP returns hash ref. If VLOOKUP can't find lookup value and range lookup is true, it uses the largest value that is less than lookup value. And finally, if lookup value is smaller than the smallest value in the first column of table array, VLOOKUP returns the hash NA error value. So we managed to get three error messages out of it. But that's it in a nutshell. There we go. All righty. So with that in mind, now that everyone knows exactly what VLOOKUP does, um, we might as well uh, get started. Now, I don't know if any of the four of you have a particular order as to who wants to go first or last, as the case may be. But otherwise, I was just going to go in order of who I've got on my screen, which means Liam, Oz, Joe, and then Charles. Um, does anyone have any particular objection to that? So with that in mind, um, Liam, uh, your two to four minutes or five minutes, as the case may be, starts now. Hang on, let me just get my screen shared first then. Everyone see my screen all right? Yep, we're good. Hi everyone, I'm Liam Bassick. I work with uh, Tim Heng at Some Product. And uh, those who know me know I absolutely love VLOOKUP. Sorry, got that wrong, so I'll have to start that again. I hate VLOOKUP. I really, really hate VLOOKUP. And I'm, I'm going to show you quickly some of the reasons why I don't like it and why I see people uh, make common mistakes. Now, with the help in mind, let's just have a look at an example I prepared earlier using good old formula text to help me here. I've got 
in here an example of VLOOKUP where I've got a table. For a start, my data is not always going to be neatly in a table, so you have to come up with these contrived tables, which, which frustrates me sometimes. And what happens if I want to look up something to the left? Well, good luck with that. Um, but I've got here a value of two. So if I put the value two in here, I can go, right, we can look up at the top, get it to zoom in. I've got the formula VLOOKUP G23, F13 to M18, 8. First thing I don't like about that, it's promoting hard code. One of the things we say when we're saying best practice spreadsheet modeling is you shouldn't have, you should have consistency, you should have robustness, you should have flexibility, you should have transparency. The F for flexibility is one of the things that VLOOKUP seems to make sure people don't do. They put these numbers in, these hard coded numbers, which says, I want, if we look at this particular formula in here, press the F2 function key, I'm looking up in the first column, the number two, which is highlighted in the conditional formatting here uh, in cell F14, and it returns eight columns to the right, the value 47 in the same table. Uh, that's what's going on. Now notice I've deliberately not put the fourth argument down. And the reason I've done that is many people, when they see that the fourth argument is optional, and just a reminder, if I go back in here, uh, if I just uh, get it, please zoom in for me, you will see that the fourth argument range lookup, which a lot of people get confused with, they think, oh, well, I don't need to put that in. Well, here's what happens when you don't. OK, so at the moment it seems to be working fine. If I put a one in here, it's all nice and fine and so on. But to quote uh, a, a scene from my daughter, who's uh, just turned 13's favourite series of movies, Saw, I want to play a game. What I've got here is instead of having the numbers one, two, three, four, five, six, what happens if you've got duplicates? And if I put in here the number two, put this in twice I can actually get in this case NA which is quite right because there is no number one anymore and that's the error message that it said fine no problem so far it does what it says on the tin but if I change this to a two is it going to give me the 84 or the 47 what do you think vote now well if I go in here and pick two it actually is highlighting the two options but it's going to give me the second value the 47 so the duplicate all right well let's make this one a two what happens now well, that becomes 80. I see a pattern. It's picking the last one. No problem. Let's take the one down here then. Ah, it's still 80. This is confusing. Now, some people say, well, yeah, that's OK, Liam. You know, it's it, it's one of these things that you've not put the final argument in. And just to show you what happens here with this, it, I've got the four duplicates and other things. But um, if I go through and show it with um, other, other examples in here, I've got, uh, if I can find it, I want this one. Here's one where I've got the value two in here and it doesn't give me an answer. What happens is it breaches the order of the fact that we've got in here the, the values one, two, three, four, five, albeit with uh, two fives and the four is negative. Um, and the fact is, in this case, it doesn't work with the fact that we don't have the fourth argument. But if I put the fourth argument in, I've got two values. I've got true or false. If I put comma true in here, it's the same as having the default and it still gives me hash NA because it needs things in ascending order and I'm breaching that. If I go for false, though, it seems to work fine. OK, so that's what we do. Do false and then it's all OK. Yeah, you sure? Let's insert three columns. Now what we've got is um, <laughs> I've done it on the wrong example. What I just want to go back to this one here. Right. So let's just say now I put the false in here. So I put the false in here, so now it's it's all working. Problem with this with eight columns is if I then just go in here and insert, it no longer is picking up the 80. Uh, what's actually happening now is it's going to pick up uh, 99. Well, here's a good question for you. Where is 99 for a start in here? Has any, anyone actually spotted where the heck that's working it from? So this, this is one of the issues in here that are uh, going through Let's uh, let's just put these back to one, two, three, four, five to give you a fighting chance to work out what on earth is going in here. So with this one here, it's now giving me 96, which is this value over here, because this is now the eighth column. Column six is now eight. Problem, what happens when people insert columns? If instead of inserting, I delete columns, I can actually get hash ref, and this is an issue. So those that sort of say they don't like to use index match and things like that because it's two functions when you only need one. Well, my issue here is that's all well and good, but actually with VLOOKUP, you need to use the Lord of the Rings function. 
the Lord of the Rings function? What's that? Why? Columns. The columns function. I've got to put in here, instead of the eight, I should put in how many columns we're actually including. And that's columns, not column, which again can cause confusion. So it's adding things in necessarily. And then what happens is if I insert columns, it still works. And if I delete them, it still works. Now, I know I'm close to time, but there's one other example I want to show very quickly, if I may. And if I, if I, if I don't, may, I'm still going to do it in any case, which is this particular one, which uh, I want to point out here is uh, another e example of VLOOKUP versus index match. Now, Charles and Joe can probably tell me about timings, and I do know that there have been improvements in VLOOKUP, and they will come to those, I'm sure. But I've got here a total of 20,000 items in this table. Great, eh? And what I want to do is be able to pick a particular item in here and get the result out, which is exactly what uh, the VLOOKUP function is useful for. And I've actually written this correctly already in here. So I've even used the columns function where it's picking up the items and giving me the actual value. That's having to go through and sift through 20,000 items on each one to actually work out which one to deliver back. If I'd used index match instead, I could have used the match function to find out which row this item was on first of all, and then just used index once to actually return that value, which would have meant that I'm only searching for it the one time before copying it forward. And again, I think this promotes uh, inefficiency. And to finish with, the final reason why this is a big deal is no matter of the timing of it, whether they're still close, VLOOKUP is actually a semi-volatile function because if I go back to, to the first file, which I unfortunately have closed now, let me just open it again. If I go back to here, is that if I am using VLOOKUP just normally in here, one of the issues is it's only referring to the first and the final column. But if you actually change something in the middle, the thing recalculates. Why? It's got nothing to do with it. It's it's actually semi-volatile. And if you've got a large spreadsheet, that's actually going to cause some extra overhead that's unnecessary in your file. So I don't think there's any reason to listen to anybody else. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Oh, I think others want to talk. OK, thank you, William. Um, <clears throat> Oz, do you want to have your say, your right of reply? Sure. Everyone in the jury, you are going to hear a lot of malarkey, a lot of stuff about what if you delete columns or add columns, you need to move something, something weird is going to happen. Yes, that happens. And it's good that you know that it happens. What they're doing is preventing these weird contexts work their way backwards to some cockamamie point about VLOOKUP is bad. No, a lot of situations, I would not even use VLOOKUP in these weird situations. I would do an outer join. I would do an X lookup. I might even do an index match match for a two-way lookup. What's the point? These are tools. And no matter what I say, about VLOOKUP having value, somebody says, hey, I need you to match this list and this list and then email the, the final text to me. Do the VLOOKUP and be done. Email the stuff, move on. There are none of those concerns left over because the task is done. Okay. And I'm going to tell you another thing. This reminds me of, of jazz musicians, where you got a jazz bassist, he's up there playing, and these other jazz bassists are in the audience. <laughs> he's talking smack. But you know what matters? The band leader and the audience, not those weird basses back there griping. They'll never hire you for a gig, right? So. Use VLOOKUP if it works, if it's appropriate. Don't listen to these people. And the people you really don't want to listen to, this index match people. Because they have turned index match into a religion. I was invited to something from some index match people. And I got there. Everybody was naked and covered in margarine. 
and there was somebody with a headdress on. I said, no, you people have gone too far. This is not a religion. Index match is a tool. VLOOKUP is a tool. Power Query is a tool. XLOOKUP. Use what works for you in your context. Thank you. Very well said. Thank you, Oz. Um, ex ex excellent reply. Are you sure oh, that was an index match party you went to, Oz? It, it wasn't a party. It was a ceremony. <laughs> I would have the right, right address. <laughs> <laughs> How long did you hang around before leaving? I didn't go in. <laughs> I smelled all that margarine and B.O. And I, no, 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 no. That's his other business, Charles. <laughs> all righty so uh joe did you want to have your say yeah yeah let me let me share some thoughts um yeah so i mean i'm on as you can see the, the excel engineering team and you know we su we're supporting all those users out there it doesn't matter who you are if you like vlookup one use uv lookup or index match um we you know we, we want to give you the tools that 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 you want to use so we give users what they want um but um you know if we look at things like vlookup vlookup has some um some challenges in it and it's a it's a wildly popular function i mean even today um even after looking at lookup it see it sees extensive use so we've got to teach people about some of the alternatives but if you look at why it succeeded and why people love it so much there was this first I don't know, this first database style function that people um use in the product and when they use XLOOKUP or VLOOKUP, um, it allows them to do use Excel for more than just more than a calculator. It's more than just like adding numbers. You can do these kind of database operations. And for many people, that's kind of mind blowing. Um, so it's a great function. It was doing a lot of great work um, for, I guess, 37 years in the product. So it's been in Excel for 37 years. It's been there since day one. It's got a really interesting history, too. Um, Maybe I'll, I'll touch on a bit of that. It was originally added to Lotus 1, 2, 3. Um, Excel was competing with Lotus 1, 2, 3 back in the day. Um, so we built um, VLOOKUP into Excel. And even before that, there was the predecessor function, which was LOOKUP. Um, that was added to PhysiCalc. Um, and um, that was kind of the original LOOKUP function um, added by Bob Frankston. Um, for his 1979 tax return. Um, so that's kind of the, the lineage. And then we eventually added XLOOKUP. So there have been sort of very few functions in this family, and now we've got this new one. But VLOOKUP has done a ton of work. And if you look at the success of VLOOKUP, you know, there, were, there were, I think, maybe better alternatives for certain people, certainly in financial modeling, um, index match. Um, but it wasn't really approachable to a lot of people um, because you added nest functions. You had to think about passing arguments into a function um that was the result of a calculation um, and that for many users that that might be you know they're, they're not at that point initially so vlookup was that kind of um, gateway function and then maybe they they don't go they don't progress much further or they, they it, it serves their needs and they don't they stick with it because they're familiar with it um so that was you know some of the pros for vlookup um but you know i I don't use VLOOKUP. Um, I stay away from it. Um, I used to work in the world of financial modeling and I've run into a lot of the um, challenges with VLOOKUP. Um, so, you know, what are those? Um, firstly, I mean, I think there's this, it's it's a brittle function. And when we look at designing functions in Excel today, we try and make them, we make sure they're not brittle. And we don't want to give you something that, um, that, that can break and, um, particularly break silently, which is one of the things that can happen with VLOOKUP. Um, if you forget that final argument, which I think for 99% of people, they should be setting it to false because they're interested in an exact match. And if they forget that, then it just, it fails, but it also doesn't fail with an error that you know that it's failed, it, it fails, and it can be silent on that. Um, and that could get you into some trouble. So, you know, we're trying to, 
steer people away from that into kind of safer alternatives like things like VLOOKUP. Um, it breaks on column inserts. Now, you know, also say, hey, if you're not going to insert columns, you're fine to use VLOOKUP. And I think that's fine, but um, many folks, you know, it's it's Excel. So you start off, you play with data, and then, you know, you maybe you don't, you weren't thinking of in, inserting columns initially, but then you have a bright idea and you're like, oh, maybe I can include this thing. And then you do an insert and now all of a sudden something fails um, and you didn't really see that coming. So there, there's kind of, there's some traps in VLOOKUP that you have to be aware of that some of the newer functions like XLOOKUP don't subject you to. And the other things like you can't look to the left, it overspecifies its dependency ranges, which means it calculates too often. And then um, maybe one that, I mean, I don't think Liam called out, but VLOOKUP does wildcards by default. So if you happen to be looking up something that has an asterisk or a question mark in it, VLOOKUP is going to give you the wrong answer, even if you go and put that false. Whereas something like XLOOKUP is um, you have to opt in to the wildcard. You have to say, I would like you to do a wildcard match. So there are um, there are a fewer traps there. Um, and some of those, like, you know, you're not going to hit it, but then one day you'll be looking up something with an asterisk and it'll fail and you won't even know why. Um, yeah, so that's just a, a few thoughts, a few of my own thoughts on um, VLOOKUP and kind of the um, the alternative, which these days is XLOOKUP if you've got access to it. Um, but there are certainly some times where you, 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 you're working people in old Excel, maybe you need to use VLOOKUP or, um, and there are some applications for it there. Um, but I think the, the it's it's kind of closing and sunsetting. Um, VLOOKUP has had 37 years in the sun and I think it's, um, it's enjoying a, a good retirement now or hopefully. So those are my thoughts. That was great, Joe. Thank you uh, very much for the calm, cool head of, uh, of reason and rationality. Um, as well, well as distinguished the history, chairman, well, distinguished chairman, may I respond to a misrepresentation of my position? <laughs> <laughs> Go for it, Oz. <laughs> uh, my distinguished <laughs> colleague said that um, Oz might say that if you're not going to insert a column, then you you find and then he said but and there again is a shifting of the context and not a statement about the tool itself because if i again if all i'm going to do is match some stuff up and when i'm done copy paste his values paste it in an email and move on there is no column to insert there's nothing moving around it's dead and also a person using VLOOKUP should know these things and anticipate that and say, OK, yes, I'm going to insert a column and I know stuff is going to start moving on me. Just like I can't put a pivot table next to another pivot table. It's not going to let me. So I need to know these things. So that is about the tool. And I yield my time back. Actually, I, I'd like to say for once, I'm in complete agreement with us here. I would like to point out that if you are going to promote a whole lot of bad practice, like copying and pasting things in and through, that, there's, that I think VLOOKUP is a great tool for promoting that bad practice. <laughs> so no issue there at all. <laughs> all right. All right. OK. All right. Chuck Tipsy. OK. We, <laughs> Charles. So, Charles, uh, would you like to have your say on the on the topic? OK, right. Well, I was just remembering about 10 years ago, I stood up at uh, one of these MVP summit things in Redmond and I uh, gave a little pitch about what was wrong with VLOOKUP and recommendations about what the Excel team ought to do about it. And 10 years later, eh, they've done most of it. Fantastic. Well done, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> it only took 10 years. I, I haven't wow. seen that presentation. What did we miss? <laughs> you missed a few things. I'll tell you about oh. that. <laughs> now, uh, back in the day before this wonderful XLOOKUP arrived on the scene, yeah, there was all this controversy about VLOOKUP and index match. And I'm kind of with Oz on this. You know, uh, when it's nice and simple, I use VLOOKUP because it's easy. When I want to do more complicated things, yeah, I use index match. And when I've got a, a reasonably up-to-date version of Excel, I use XLOOKUP. It's as simple as that, guys. It really is. There's no problem about this at all. Now, I mean, there are lots of good things about XLOOKUP, which uh, I guess we maybe ought to go into. I don't know. 
it's uh, it's a lot faster than VLOOKUP. It doesn't have so much of this dependency fan out problem because they split the table into a separate lookup column and a separate uh, answer column. And you got rid of all those column numbers, things, and uh, they've separated out uh, what to do if it doesn't match. Uh, they've scrapped all these ridiculous defaults that uh, VLOOKUP has, got more sensible ones now. So it's pretty good function. Um, I like it. On the other hand, they haven't taken it far enough, of course. We ought really to have, uh, you know, we ought to be able to do a regex lookup. We ought to be able to look up more than one column at a time, you know, and we ought to look up more than one row at a time. You know, come on, Joe, let's get with it. So that's my six penneth anyway. Right. A lot of things to dig in there. Future. <laughs> Charles, do you want to add anything about the times and the, the efficiency of free lookup and how it's improved? Yeah, well, it's uh, it is fairly magic because um, that was one of my recommendations, by the way, ten years ago, that they they built an index or a, or a memory function into into lookup because uh, most of the time when you're doing a lookup, you, know, you change something in the in the lookup column, um, but you don't change the row in which the lookup value actually is. So it gaily goes away and calculates all over again when it doesn't really need to. So if you've got an index or a, or a memory in there, it doesn't need to do that. So there's some uh, fairly astounding kind of performance improvements that you can get with uh, with XLOOKUP. So it is a lot better from that point of view. Of course, you could always do that if you'd got sorted data anyway, except that then you had to worry about what happened if you were trying to look up a value that didn't exist in the sorted data, in which case you had to do clever things like the double VLOOKUP trick that nobody knows about. Yeah, you could do it, but once a good. That do it for you? Sounds good. Yeah, no, I wasn't sure. I was just wondering yeah. before we go to the main thing, if anyone had made it, just to be neutral and fair about it was the, there were some performance improvements made have we, have we made it clear about vlookup about two or three years ago i think it was that uh vlookup was got got faster i don't know yeah I don't but i kind of prefer that. if you brush that brush that under the carpet it should never have happened really should have should have waited for x lookup would have been much better <laughs> yeah it got a little faster but um i think one of the the things that I think you touched on briefly there was kind of the sorting requirement of VLOOKUP and one of those I mean that's probably my favorite part of XLOOKUP is yes. your data doesn't need to be sorted you can just do greater than less than matches and you you don't even have to worry about sorting data you just write that formula and you just go and say just give me this thing and it it goes and works that out whereas if you look up you had to sort to get those greater than or less than um, type matches. In fact, you couldn't really do those. The greater than type matches, you could do the less than. It was really wacky. Um, so that was, uh, you know, we teased out all that kind of logic and I think broke it out into its core constituent parts with with XLOOKUP and gave you a lot more flexibility. Yeah, XLOOKUP XLOOK is pretty cool. So I've got a question for you, Joe. Um, um, Given the history of lookup and vlookup, um, do you think, like no, knowing that lookup um, has essentially your, you know, your lookup value, lookup range, and output range, um, but was an approximate match all the time? Vlookup was, uh, you know, a table range lookup. Do you think if if they if Excel at the time had just dropped in a true false option for lookup, do you think we would have even got to X lookup at any point? Because we wouldn't have had a lot of the issues that VLOOKUP has that um, that Liam and yourself talked about. Are you saying an exact match for lookup? Yes, oh, the exact match option for lookup. Yeah, I mean, we still fall into. You just, you know, it would have had some benefits of uh, the VLOOKUPs of the world, but we would have still fallen. Into, it would have still had that like additional argument that you would have had to have gone and provided. Um, so you know users would look at that and maybe skip over that. Um, the approximate matches would always have been a little bit difficult because I think internally it was doing a binary search, so you would have still had to have done a lot of the sorting. Um, so it would have been a kind of a halfway-ish step. Um, I thought it, 
I, I don't know would have got us there. I think we're in a, in a better place now with XLOOKUP um, where it kind of calls out a lot of the specific behaviors and also defaults to being resilient, just defaults to like not requiring sorted data. You can still use, we even give you the binary um, search option in the end and we gave that to you to so that folks who really do have sorted data know it's going to be sorted 100% of the time could get a slight speed bump but like it's so minuscule that speed bump it's really almost not worth doing but we really wanted to get to a point where we were like hey you can get with xlookup you can do everything and there might be like some weird outline cases but like you can really replace your usage with with xlookup um and even if you know charles came up and said hey but i've got sorted data and there's this like it's a tiny bit faster if you do this and this well okay you can use that final argument um just to try and minimize the use cases there um because you really want to you know we don't want users to have to learn we, you know we're adding a new function xlookup and then that's another thing to learn. So unless you take away something else, so you say, okay, well now you don't need an OV lookup because um, you know X lookup can replace all your use cases, then um, it would just be an extra thing for people to to learn. So we really wanted to make sure there was kind of a superset that you could. We weren't in a world where you're like, oh, I have to use VLOOKUP for this and XLOOKUP for this and look up for this other thing, and then there's H lookup and, and X lookup maybe for this small scenario. We really wanted it to try and be a superset as far as as, as much as possible. So you're like, now there's a whole bunch of functions you don't have to learn, and it's just this one new function, and you're in a better state as a user. Do you guys know that some people recommend using some if for lookups, uh, mind blowing, absolutely mind blowing. Uh, <clears throat> is that that particular scenario is where they, 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 it's a multi match? I think is it the ifs? No, the, yeah. I, I, before that, I, I saw it in a very well known agreement, which unfortunately I, I can't say live on this, but. It was a, a, a crazy German guy, actually. He, he actually built an entire model using some if, pretty much. It was like it was the only function he knew, but he used it. It worked fine as long as it was just one item. But um, yeah, performance could have been a little bit faster, Charles. <laughs> wow. wow. But I, I want to inject Power Query and out of joins here because um, mm. Uh, yeah, I hear a lot of uh, exciting stuff about XLOOKUP, and I like it, and I use it. But more, I'm using an outer join in Power Query. Yeah. And typically, yeah, if things get too complicated for me, I jump from a VLOOKUP to an outer join. And then an outer join can bring back, so one example I've used in workshops is, what if I have, say, tenants, and I want to know what cars they have in the parking lot? And then some people have two cars in the parking lot. I want those matched up with those tenants. I can do that with an outer join. Yeah, I mean, I think that's another function that we ought to have in 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 Excel is a is a a join function. Um, so you don't always want to use Power Query to do these things. Sometimes you want to do them dynamically in the um, in the middle of the calculation chain. And um, it would be nice to be able to do all that in a sensible way. It's quite easy to do. <laughs> sure. Sure. There's Joel's application to <laughs> join the program team at uh, Microsoft there, you know, or, or Hedit, I think. <laughs> but it's not that much code. I think it only took about 100 lines of code or something. Charles has plugged right into the program team. Um, <laughs> It's, Charles is great. We're, we're a big fan of Charles. Yes, yes. Thank you. Yeah, there's a lot of. There's a lot, then, I mean, let me also say to the audience that there's a whole bunch of talk about speed. There aren't many of us who have so much data that we're concerned about speed. Over the years, I did have one workbook that had so many VLOOKUPs in it. I estimated maybe 40,000 VLOOKUPs in it. And this was an example where me and the lead developer both agreed this project should not be in Excel. Somebody made this monster 
uh, to import all this data and they got all these VLOOKUPs everywhere with all kind of ifs and conditions. And there were times where the workbook wouldn't even open or it would open briefly and then crash. Um, and that was the semi volatility of VLOOKUP at the time. But I've seen that once in over 20 years. So uh, speed has never really been a concern of mine. I don't do uh, keyboard shortcuts. My style is just just get in there and get stuff done. Uh, these fancy, pretty people, they do all this other stuff. Yeah, speed can be overrated. I mean, uh, we, we've seen an awful lot of debates over the years about which is faster, index, match, or VLOOKUP. And the answer is they're both the same. Give or right. take a few percent depends on the scenario. So it's a complete waste of time trying to find out which is faster. It's totally irrelevant. Nobody can ever notice it in real life. But th right. there are cases, Charles, where that's not true uh, in, in terms of we, t Tim and I actually worked on a model where um, it was I don't want to bring in an, another uh, controversial function unnecessarily here, but one of my other favourite functions, which I, I know, um, uh, the, for instance, uh, the accounting firm PwC hate with a passion is uh, offset. And um, yeah. we, we actually had a massive file that we were dealing with where, um, you know, offsets badly volatile and things like this, but it was the fastest way of calculating something. Uh, and it was that all the other approaches, VLOOKUP uh, index match, the whole 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 group of them were taking minutes, if not years, aeons, whatever, to actually calculate. An offset was more like, OK, it wasn't quite as good as that, but it was it was significantly uh, better. And more importantly, the model was more stable. And I think stability and efficiency in some of the uh, other files and this is this is an area that Tim and I work in in, in particular that we, we look at those we, we know for a lot of people it doesn't matter if you just go and put through and put them in but is that a reason itself to promote things where you've got all these hidden dangers and that's one of the concerns that uh, you know well you can, you can drive a car without a seat belt and, and, and things like this or you know or without brakes it's it, it's a case of it you only need them when you need them uh, uh, but but is that necessarily a reason to say, yeah, keep using it if there's something better? And that, that's really it. It's a case of I'm I'm, I'm trying to be Mother Nature here and uh, push VLOOKUP up into extinction. I think that's a pretty good analogy, actually, driving without a seatbelt. Um, I, you know, I think VLOOKUP is you're yeah, probably fine as long as you you're very, um, very consistent about adding that false argument. Um, and that you you never get tired one day and forget to add it, um, and then it, you get the wrong answer and make a bad decision. Um, so, yeah, I think that's a good analogy. Yeah, you can you can certainly go and be careful and 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 not fall down that trap. But we're all humans; we make mistakes, and we want to minimize the, the the risk associated with that. Um, and I think VLOOKUP is just is a lot more risk than there are with alternatives. We'll see. And if we want to extend that analogy, what if I'm just backing a car out of the garage and onto the driveway so I can get the lawnmower out? I'm and not then, putting the seatbelt on. But you never know when you're going to get hungry and decide, oh, I'm backing out. And you're like, oh, my gosh, I think I'm just going to shoot down the 7-Eleven and, and get yeah. me some chocolate milk. Right. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah, and then and then I put my seatbelt on <laughs> and I lock the doors and everything. But if you're really, yeah. really hungry. Maybe really? you just decide to gun it. <laughs> then that's that's a risk that's on me, right? <laughs> and the business that makes the decisions. And there, there are there are war stories out there. And it's not this isn't just something that applies just to VLOOKUP. There's other functions out there yes. where people have fallen foul of things where they've they've, they've trusted it. And, and and I think one of the big dangers is for VLOOKUP. It's one of the top four functions in Excel. It's it's one of it's 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 the first thing that people say they're an advanced user because they actually know how to spell VLOOKUP or something like that. But it's 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 one of those things in there. It's it's so well loved. It's been around as Joe says, thirty seven years. It's part of the furniture uh, and, and things like that. So therefore, it must be right. Must work in all situations. And I think it's this familiarity breeds contempt. And and I think it's 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 one of as as I think Joe's word brittle. 
it is a good description of it that yeah. you know programming's come a long way since vlookup came around uh, and and the fact is that what what Microsoft don't do is change it because it, it's like you know having a new Coke. It, you you can't you can't change it. So, well, we've we've now the new improved VLOOKUP is out here. You, you'd have more protests, and you've got in Melbourne presently. It's a case of you know it's um it's 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 it, it's it's a thing that you know I think a lot of people would like to change the final argument of match to comma zero for the same sort of reason. Just wish oh I wish we hadn't done one that sort of thing. It's the same thing. You can't change these things. But I, I'm just scared that, that that we're having a whole new generation keeps coming in and still see using it because some of these files are 20, 30 years old and not knowing the inherent dangers in there. Maybe the original driver knew there were no brakes on this car. It was fine. But what happens when you give it to the grandkids? The Maybe they need to be over three. They can't reach the brakes, but that's another <laughs> thing. No, no, see, <laughs> the context has changed. And so you reevaluate what you're doing within the context. So, so you reevaluate all your old spreadsheets when, when someone else takes them over, or you, ju you just change the inputs and just think, yeah, well, people have been using this since time immemorial, so it must work. I'll just insert this row over here. What what could possibly go wrong? Well, see, well, see that now you're being dishonest here, right? Because I would have to look at a whole lot of things, a lot of things, not just if there's V lookups in there and if the person who inherited it from me is going to do something. I got to look at, you know, maybe we need to just blow the whole thing up and redesign something else using Power Query. There's so many things that are built that would have benefited from having Power Query in it. There is a time and a place for Power Query, and I don't really want to go down there here. That's not what this 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 particular right, right, yeah. video is about. But it's it's really it's like what's what's the formulaic alternative? Because the, the thing with Power Query is that opens up another kettle of fish about people forgetting to hit refresh and goodness knows what else. Um, and, and the black box that ensues with some of that, for, that are, those are too unfamiliar. But in, in terms of going here, that, you know, if you're not going to use VLOOKUP, but you want a formulate response, you know, uh, that's that's what this is about. I mean, I agree yeah. it's horses for courses and there is a time and a place for VLOOKUP. We just agree to disagree when that is. For me, it's there isn't one, but but, you know, there, okay. for others, there, there, there is this particular situation, and as long as I think you, you stick to the rules, it's possible. But this is it. A lot of people don't know the rules, Oz. That's the issue. Mm -hmm. That's why we share our knowledge to help people know the rules, know the context, know the when and why and the how. So speaking of context, I mean, as you're talking about, you know, reevaluating things, um, you know, in a different context, or when you're sending, um, you know, sending things out to other people, um, there seems to be general universal appreciation for X lookup at the moment. Yes. Um, is that something that you might consider when you send things out? Whether the person on the other end is, you know, someone who can actually use X lookup, because obviously X lookup is a is a more modern function and. Uh, um, yeah, you know, doesn't doesn't work for people using Excel 2016 and earlier. Right, that's that's an issue too to think about. Is um, who am I sending stuff to, and if there are live formulas in there, you know, in the example I used earlier, there are no live formulas at the end. So use VLOOKUP and be done with it. Uh, but yeah, if I'm going to do something more sophisticated, if I want to do something from a, a bottom up or use the if not found part of the formula, um, then yeah, I've got to think about on the other end, what are they dealing with? You know, are they going to have the X lookup to use? So yeah, lots to think about. Hopefully I answered the question. Yeah, no, I was just looking for something to try and keep keep okay. discussions going. Okay, <laughs> can, all right. Can I add one thing for X lookup, uh, just to Joe? Actually, is is one thing mm -hmm. here. I I think you've you've almost hit X lookup on the head as you know being a great all rounder. There's there's just one thing for me that just which wouldn't actually uh, upset anything. It's just if it had the ability to be able to with the second and the third arguments, one could be a transpose of the other. That's the one limitation where lookup beats it at the moment. 
Yeah, so I mean, you could. We we thought of that, um, and the reason we didn't do it is because we it we thought it made it more brittle um, for most people. Um, having them have them parallel, um, especially when you XLOOKUP supports a multi-return. So for some reason, your second thing ended up being one row instead of multi, like two-dimensional. It could end up looking across where you had expected it to go down. So that was a, a consideration to make it l less brittle, maybe for some outlying cases, but that was something we thought about and we thought, oh, if you needed that and it was really intentional, there would be the transpose option as a kind of a building block for you to do it. Um, yeah. So that's kind of a bit, of, a bit of the background on that one. Um, yeah. It was just to make it more resilient. We thought, let's 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 just write the error and then um, if there are some error cases, unintentional error cases, that that might stop people getting hurt. I know you're, you're obviously intentionally trying to trigger it, but it could repro in the in the wild just unintentionally mm. yeah. so what would happen if we built an x lookup compatible function that worked with previous versions if who built and, it? well yeah anybody could build it it's not that difficult i mean you can you can do it i think you, but you'd have to do it in vba i think or X, you'd have to use an xll and there'd be an add-in associated with it yeah uh, I think there's also some considerations about the way it's saved to file, and um, I don't know if we'd, re we'd reckon was it be saved as a first party function, and then if you opened it in old Excel and you had maybe a UDF called um, XLOOKUP, it wouldn't immediately be recognized as that UDF. Um, it would be recognized as an internal function. Yeah, you're probably function, right. And you might have to F2 enter it or something like that. I mean, yeah, there'd be some considerations about that whole back on yeah. that. That situation but you know i think we, we get a lot of requests actually people saying hey can you can you bring it to excel 20 uh 2019 it's actually not in 2019 um or 2016 um and um we we, we, we don't do that on purpose you know hypothetically we, we could maybe release it as kind of a patch but um for these sort of for functionality we don't want to bring that back because it departments depend on validating um validating versions of excel and they go and validate that for their organization. They're not expecting it to change. If we start changing things, then um, they'd be disappointed. Um, we could break things. Um, there could be things that they need to consider. Um, so we don't, you know, as a policy, we don't end up bringing new features to older versions of Excel. Is that's why those older versions, those point in time versions exist, because you get Excel 2016 and you get the features as of 2016. If you want modern features, then there are different, um, there are different uh, SKUs to get onto. Um, so, yeah, just a bit of background as to why we don't bring those to older versions of Excel. This is now the plug for Excel 2022. Uh, yeah, yeah, there, there'll be another um, another big box version. Uh, we could, that's what we call it um, internally, the big box version. But, you know, I think the thing is you, uh, today from a compatibility expect, uh, perspective, being on 365 guarantees you the kind of best compatibility you can open spreadsheets that are out there sent by anyone um so i think we'd encourage folks to get on board with that that's just the way software has has moved we've gone from these big box versions which you walked into a store every six years and installed that thing um or if you're a really keen excel user maybe at every three years you get the latest to play with it but the reality was a lot of people would be six years between maybe even nine years between updates and you know, that's a that's an eternity these days and in, in kind of um, in the software world things are just iterating so quickly and I think you'll see things will keep accelerating um, we've got done a lot of exciting stuff in Excel over the last little while I mean Excel 2019 doesn't have dynamic arrays or XLOOKUP um, you take a look at um, um, 20, 2021 2022 it'll have that in it um, as a pretty big step on the calc side and there are a whole bunch of other features like the COBOL features, there's intelligence features, there's data type features. So things things are are, are, are moving at a rapid pace, I'd say, um, evolving quickly. Wow. Yeah. So. Sorry, Oz, were you going to say something? No, yeah. no, no. OK, cool. Mm -hmm. OK, um, so if, if no one has any other topics, I might ask a, a, another topic. Um, just generally, um, 
Do you, for those people uh, who are still on older versions, uh, 2019 and earlier, given that, that you know that's still a fairly significant group of the population, um, Joe, you're saying there's still you know, significant VLOOKUP usage even after um, XLOOKUP has been sort of released and is clearly a superior function in, in most ways. Um, do you see, or how, how do you see the trajectory of VLOOKUP <clears throat> changing in the future as more people roll onto the uh, more modern versions of Excel as such? Um, do you see that sort of falling off more? <clears throat> do you see it as um, people continuing to use yeah. the functions that they they have sort of been, they have been using in the last few years since XLOOKUP was created? Yeah, I think um, you know that there's 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 a certain amount of inertia when folks um, folks are used to doing something for a long time, maybe even 35, 37 years, I guess. It takes them a, a while to move, and we're not we're not prescriptive. Um, Excel's just a bunch of building blocks. We don't really take building blocks away from you, so you're free to use it. We might move VLOOKUP to being a compatibility function. It's currently not flagged as a compatibility function, um, but that's something that could happen in future. And this, you know, all that is is just really an icon, um, and we're just encouraging you to like move on to alternatives. Um, so I think that it'll be gradual. I think the momentum will gain as the word gets out there and um, folks use it more and more. But I, I you know. You still look up usage out there, and that you know that was kind of replaced a long time ago. Um, and I think they'll still see some V lookup usage out there, um, and we're just hoping that that runs down. Uh, we'd like to see our users use less brittle functions, just from a um, this kind of a best practice, and for their you know for their own sanity. Um, you know, we're obviously interested in our users having a good spreadsheeting experience. So. And we'd like to see them move. Um, and we'll, you know, we, we might end up promoting it or giving them hints in future to say, hey, you should shift across. We have teaching moments. And we haven't done a lot of that just yet, but we'll, 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 we'll take a look at some of those opportunities as it gets out there and it's, there's, there's more resources and um, it's in a better place for people to jump on board. Maybe you ought to have a sort of conversion utility that would scan a spreadsheet and say, Okay, do you want me to convert all your VLOOKUPs to XLOOKUP? Yeah, we haven't we haven't really explored anything in that space, or haven't shipped anything that kind of um, refactors your spreadsheet. Um, so, um, I mean, there's certainly app. I mean, you you may be even able to do that as a third party tool. Um, but um, there's some yeah, there's some considerations. We obviously can't restate all of them. Um, because there's some unusual cases where you've got calcs feeding into it and it's not a one-to-one -one, um, replacement. You can't just change the V to an X. Um, you actually you have to go and do a bunch of stuff. Um, but yeah. maybe for some some simple cases, you could do something like that. Um, but it's also scary because then people need a review there. I mean, I think people are scared when they go and hand this spreadsheet across to you know, some algorithm that says refactor my spreadsheet. Like, what's changed has been working and my other other risks of consideration so um but maybe maybe yeah but, but I, i'm not liking the sound of this um you know this teaching tips and um yeah. the uh v lookup slowly fading away and it beca eventually becoming what this compatibility thing because i get so much stuff Right, where different machine learning algorithm is trying to help me, but it does yeah. not know my context. It does not know what the hell I'm trying to do. And it's not asking me questions. It's just yeah. some damn algorithms from some engineer somewhere who's got some cockamamie features and is now is just a nosy neighbor knocking on my door, <laughs> at, look, trying to help me. <laughs> I don't need any help. Yeah. Or I need help, but not that kind of help. Yeah. So when you get these things, hey, have you thought about this? Yeah, I thought about that. Or, huh, now that I think about it, no, this doesn't have anything to do with me. Leave me alone. Yeah. Yeah, this, this idea idea. To get us for Christmas. We get him, get him Microsoft and get him a Clippy helper that will remove all the <laughs> for him. Oh, wow. yeah, yeah. You look you? like you're writing a VLOOKUP, Oz. 
<laughs> yeah. And I said, yes, I am. <laughs> now go back to your own apartment and leave me alone. <laughs> Uh, good stuff. Uh, I, to, just to echo what Oz is saying, he's not liking the fact that it, it looks like VLOOKUP might be uh, fading away. I, I don't want that. I, I, sincerely, I don't want that. I just want it to die. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, what I mean is having, you know, having some decision made somewhere for all the rest of us. Yeah. That it needs to go away or get hidden away slowly where it's still a legitimate tool it has legitimate uses as does the whole arsenal of the 400 ish functions in in excel yeah I, we're, we're never going to be prescriptive on this but okay i think okay no, it's not it's not it's not like your vlookup's gonna like we're just going to remove it and then that spreadsheet right, right. you developed 12 years ago all of a sudden just like pound names or we change your formulas like that's that's not the excel way we right right we, well if you have a build i mean we still got excel four macros in there so um they you know there's it's not going to work on excel online but they they still kind of work and um, we haven't removed those things so compatibility is something we care about deeply yeah um It'll be there, but we do also, you know, there are there are benefits in this to, to using some of the modern things. Um, yes, there are. There. And helping, you know, got to seek to get users onto some of these new things where it would benefit them. Obviously, we don't want to be noisy like that. That noisy neighbor is a great, a great example. And getting that, making the right calls on when to raise our hand is very important and a very difficult thing as well. Um, we want to make sure that um, we do that at the right time. Um, but right now we've been relatively subtle with XLOOKUP. We just released the function and you know, I think there might as well, there was a note under the what's new and it's really out there for users to discover or hear yep. about it from their colleagues um, yep. and um, find that kind of usage organically. Um, yep. And so, I've made videos know. and I've helped yep. spread the word and we'll continue spreading the word. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, the MVPs have been a great, great resource here, um, sharing with with folks and advocating for it and um, where they can use it. So yeah, yeah. yeah. And I've got um, challenges that come out on LinkedIn, and I make it a point to add some X lookup examples. Yep. You know, even whether it's some situations it could be done with VLOOKUP, but I want to show X lookup, and then there are other things that can't be done with a straight V lookup and I show the X lookup like the bottom up search. Yeah. You know, or horizontal. Yeah. So I mean I was in an X lookup world then. Do you like what what are the the situations where you'll actually use V lookup now? If it's, well, quick, well, if it's quick and I'm gonna be done. I don't, if I don't need to do a bottom up search or I don't need to do the VLOOKUP true alternative, if it's just a straight, uh, just find some stuff over here and bring it over. And then I'm on a uh, copy paste his values and it's over. X look up all day long. Can I probe on which scenarios those are? So if I look at something like VLOOKUP, it's four arguments. If I look at XLOOKUP, it's three arguments. So under which scenarios is it faster to write that formula using VLOOKUP than XLOOKUP? Like if it's just a straight up speed thing, it's just like I'm just working on this thing and it's 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 rough work. I'm not saying no one else is going to use this thing. I'm doing my calculation and I'm closing the spreadsheet down. I'm copy pasting out the values into an email and I'm dumping it. Mm -hmm. So there's like no no risks associated with that because you, you right. know your workflow. Like how much time do you think you save by using a VLOOKUP over the XLOOKUP in that scenario? Or like and and is there a time saved? Because I mean XLOOKUP is even less arguments. Right. OK, so I haven't thought about the less arguments It's more maybe just familiarity. Mm -hmm. Of just do it and I'm done. 
So it's just I think that's right. I mean, it's you know, all of us are still. We've been, we've all been with, with VLOOKUP for years, and it's you know, it's easy and it's quick to use. If I go to XLOOKUP, I start almost having to remembering. Now, hang on, how does that actually work? It's not. It's not nearly as familiar to me. So is it just so a, that, like, that's so, a problem? So if you're if you're like us, if you're if you're teaching, a, you've got you've obviously got a wide audience. But if you've got a new user, um, mm -hmm. someone who's new to Excel, they're starting out their work in accounting or an in industry, mm -hmm. um, and they don't have any like history with the VLOOKUP function. Is there any like what is the application for that person? Why should they learn VLOOKUP? Or is it just one extra thing that they need to learn that they, they should just use XLOOKUP and get on with life? I think it's the back compatibility <laughs> problem. You know, the fact that it, it, XLOOKUP doesn't work in previous versions. And half the time you're circulating your workbooks and stuff to to other people who, who don't have up-to-date Excel. I mean, it's going to take a while before that situation really changes. But that will resolve over time. I mean, clearly there's a there's a there's a while to go there. Um, there's another yeah. point though, Joe, and this is yeah. where I'm, you know, trying to be neutral and, and be on the other side because I can't believe them. Mm -hmm. But, but the, the fact is, there's a lot of old spreadsheets out there that mm -hmm. are still being used, and you know, you you know as well as I do that it's VLOOKUP City there, and it's the old adage that if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And the the, the concern I've got is, is it broke? That's the that's the thing. But, you know, because people mm. are expecting these results and seeing it. And I see this in pivot tables as well, where some of the numbers are, are actually data, aren't actually numbers and, and people think it's summing correctly. It's the same thing can happen in VLOOKUP. But because people have seen these numbers over time, I remember for a particular treasury job where the VLOOKUP was giving the wrong answer, but they decided mm -hmm. to keep sticking with the numbers it was giving because they couldn't explain the jump in the number to the board and it was safer to carry on on their current trajectory and it got swept under the carpet and mm. let's not mention that company but the fact is it, it it's really happened and i imagine that's not the only scenario that's ever happened in the world you know and and joe i'm trying to think of how i would answer your question and yeah. i would need more of a real world context because um somebody with no familiarity came to me and they had a job to do i would need to assess what's going on and maybe I would jump straight to X lookup. I would look at, um, you know, what's happening here. But then there's always, I've heard of V lookup. What does that do? Will you show me? Do I want to be the person who says, tis, tis, tisk? We're going to talk about X lookup. I feel yes, like I want, to ask, I want to answer that. You know, I don't want to be the guy like when I was needing help with um when i was writing html and i asked for help yeah. and then they said no well you shouldn't do it that way anyway yeah. oh, golly. now they just add a whole bunch of layers onto some stuff that i don't want to be dealing with anyway it, it doesn't sound like liam is concerned about being that person liam embraces that <laughs> no. No. yeah 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 i don't get bless blisters from sitting on the fence joe yeah <laughs> Ebenezer yeah. Bastic, yeah. <laughs> what it's worth, Joe, since, you know, since you're asking the question, um, I for someone who hasn't run into lookups at all before, um, mm -hmm. but is working in an Office 365 environment, I will actually teach them XLOOKUP as the primary primary lookup tool, um, and then explain the issues with backwards compatibility, and then show them index match and VLOOKUP as necessary, um, knowing that. Index match will be their go-to for backwards compatibility, and VLOOKUP will be their, I need to know how these old spreadsheets are working, essentially. Because XLOOKUP and index match are probably closer to each other in terms of concept, so it's mm -hmm. easier for them to translate from XLOOKUP to index match than it is to go from XLOOKUP to VLOOKUP, actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A classic body language there from Oz. I think we should focus on this. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't have said the next match. <laughs> that, that was the no, I'm sitting back listening. Because, yeah, you know, and I tell you what, as I used index match match way more than I use index match. Because, you know, because a weakness of um, VLOOKUP is having to 
count how many rows. So you want to bring back the 39th row or 39th column? I'm not counting that. No, I will use an index match match. So, Joe, if I can. Uh, no, go, go on, Oz, if you, you finish your example. No, that's it. That's it. Okay. So, Joe, when, when you announced XLOOKUP um, mm -hmm. to the MVP group, at least, I remember one of the things that you said was hopefully um, we're not going to be in a position where Liam or Charles or Oz or anyone um, gets to the point where they say, okay, yes, XLOOKUP is great, but you know, in, in all these examples here, you shouldn't be using XLOOKUP. You should be using an index match match because it can't do XYZ sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, for cases like Oz is talking about now with uh, you know, an index match match, is there a better way of doing it other than index X match X match as the case may be? Yeah, so I mean, you, you know, yes, kind of ph philosophically with the designer functions, you can either go and say, hey, this function is going to do everything. And then as you do that, that gets more and more arguments and then they get more and more intimidating. Or you make this function really good at this one task and it's very clean and you know what to do. And we were designing X lookup, that was kind of the philosophy, like what what is this? What are we trying to achieve? And what we we're trying to achieve was look up a single value reliably and very quickly. That's what it does. If you want to look up multiple values, yeah, it, I mean, it'll look up it'll look up an array of values because it it do the single match and it could have multiple values there. But generally, it finds one match in a table. It's where there's a, a unique entry, hits that thing, and returns the, da the, the data associated with it. This is kind of an aside. Um, w the initial name for XLOOKUP was CLOOKUP, for corresponding lookup. Um, we ended up not feeling great about that, and we sat on that for a good maybe six months, and then we ended up snapping to XLOOKUP. So that's just kind of like just a little bit of info there. Um, function naming is kind of really difficult, actually, it turns out. Wow. Um, yeah, because it's kind of in flux, and you're trying to design this thing, and you want to figure out what it does. And it, it, the reason it was corresponding lookup is it finds something and then gets the corresponding item. Um, but see look up click up i don't know it didn't really have a great <laughs> ring so it, no one felt good about that and then uh, it ended up being x look up and i think that was a, a, a good name for it um but yeah so um let me see where was i so um you know that's what x lookups that x lookup does finds one value and gets the result cleanly and there isn't there isn't a lot of excess arguments. In fact, we didn't have the if not found initially because we wanted to like minimize the arguments, but we ended up bringing it in because it's clear that it's a very common case and it makes sense to be a part of that. If you're looking for multiple results, well, there are other functions that can help there, and maybe there are some future functions that can help. Um, but you can use filter to return multiple results, and you can act on those things. Um, that's, so that's one particular function that's 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 useful in that. But XLOOKUP wasn't meant to be that. It wasn't meant to be. Hey, look down columns, look across these things. It can return all these things and all these bells and whistles. But then it has all these edge cases. And when you're reading that formula, you can't tell what it does. Is that something that's important as well? When you read a formula, yeah. Oh, I can see it's an XLOOKUP. That means it's looking for one thing and it's returning one thing. Okay, I get what it's doing. Instead of, oh, it's got 27 arguments and it can do everything. I can do everything in the world with one function. That would be a bad outcome because now you've got to like sit there and go, it's the seventh argument or one or a three. Oh, how about the next one? You've invented one? it. It's called aggregate. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and like, you know, who knows what... You know that um, aggregate four means ignore nothing. Um, I, I, you know, I, yeah, and aggregate, yeah. So you know that's kind of one of those things that it, you just it's difficult to have that kind of uh, be, be able to pass and understand what that's doing or like subtotal one hundred nine, um, some ignore hidden, right? Um, but you know. going on on that, Joe. Though one, one of the things is to go back to uh, Oz's, uh index match match, which is a common thing, a two way lookup um, that that mm -hmm. requires seven arguments. And, and whilst it, it, yep. it, it, it's very strict, the, you can do it with X lookup in five. So you do an X, a nested X lookup, X lookup, X lookup. We'll, we'll do it in mm -hmm. five arguments. So it mm -hmm. has made it simpler, to be fair. I mean, it's still it's simpler, not simple. It, it yeah. is what I'm saying, and you know, so you know, kudos, kudos to it there. But it, it's yeah. it's still a, a case of, a, and I look forward to seeing how people will do it with VLOOKUP transpose VLOOKUP. Yeah, 
Yeah, and this is one of the interesting things. So, like, I don't know if we're ever going to get to, like, I don't know if we're going to get to a point where it's like Excel's got all the functions in the world and no one's requesting any functions. Um, you know, we could go out and kind of a bender and try and ship, you know, 100 functions um, <laughs> that we think people might need over the next 10 years or 20 years. But also, we you'd, we ship these things incrementally. You know, we, you know, we ship XLOOKUP and then we see how people use and what the patterns are and then what else they need and there's requests and people feed in. So these things get prioritized. And actually in future, I mean, we're really excited about it, but the Lambda functions um, will allow the community to create their own functions and they won't need add-ins. They won't need, you know, security prompts with like enable. There'll be a far lower barrier to the for the community creating what they need in their profession. So, you know, accountants could create functions that are useful to accountants. Like, what do, what do we know about what's happening out there in the field in engineering? Like, people in engineering know what they need, and they can go and build the functions they need to do what they want without sitting back and waiting for us to be able to respond. Um, so that's something we're excited about for on the kind of the domain side to, like, empower people in the field to create native functions like you don't have to have an add-in no one's like oh you have to match enable content oh you email this thing around you get a security warning that's not a great experience but with lambda functions you don't have that so so charles a question for you then um do you i mean, I mean talking about the future of vlookup to xlookup and onwards um i know microsoft have uh have taken uh, not necessarily drawn inspiration but have uh, replicated a lot of the things that you've got in some of your add-ins and every time I see you present something um, uh, it's, it's always amusing to see Microsoft create their own version of it either with the same name or a slightly different name uh, two years later um, whether by coincidence or <laughs> <laughs> um, that's what, why you're a multi-millionaire with all your licensing deals isn't it Charles <laughs> Yeah, well, well you won't have giving it giving it away. <laughs> what you know, Joe's talking about, you know, new functions and things and you know, creating creating stuff everyone being able to create their own things for their own industry. But what do you think needs to be in uh the sort of the lookup type suite um in two years time? Um I think uh you know, you pretty much got it well covered with, with X lookup. Yeah, I, I'd uh, I'd go a bit further. I, I'd add regex to to a lot of the functions. Um, I don't know why why Excel doesn't support uh, regular expressions. I really don't. Um, for for lookups, well, uh, yeah. I mean, mine do a few few more things. Um, and underlying it all, of course, there is this mega function uh, that's got, I don't know how many arguments, but millions of them that you'd never dare surface to an end user because, as Joe says, you know, they'd, they'd run a mile. So I wind up with, there's always this compromise between building, you know, more functions that do little tasks and more powerful functions that do more tasks. And, mm -hmm. and it's it's always a compromise. You know, you never, you never satisfy everybody when when you go down that route. But I, I'd like to see regex in 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 functions. I think that would be useful. Uh, hmm. uh, the index match match one is is kind of nice. I mean, a lot of my functions do um, do that automatically. I, I quite like the idea that people tend to build stuff that have, have that have headers. So if you make your functions handle headers in a more sensible fashion, then they're a lot easier to use. Mm -hmm. It's my take. All right. All right. We're we're hitting. Well, I think we're probably well well and. Uh, above time, but um, just do a quick roundup. Does anyone have any final remarks they'd like to make before we wrap things up? I think we should have a vote. Yeah. Who thinks Oscar's got the best T-shirt? <laughs> 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 wow. Well, 
like the American flag on the shoulders. Oh, uh, that. Thanks. <laughs> thanks. Uh, I, that uh, that color of that T-shirt though, Oz. Um, please forgive me if it's wrong, but isn't that margarine? <laughs> Someone may have stayed along a, around a little longer than yeah. uh, you said. You didn't go to that meeting. <laughs> we, we, we busted you. Oh, great! Oh. It's an index match convert. Actually, I, I was talking about somebody walking around with a hat on. I see a lot of hats in the background. <laughs> Oh my gosh! <laughs> oh my gosh! All right, all right. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, I think that's a great note to end it on. Let's uh, let's let's wrap it up. So, thank you to Liam, to Oz, to Charles, and Joe for uh, for joining us uh, in this session. I think uh, hope, hopefully everyone will have enjoyed your insights and thoughts. Um, and uh, for everyone who's watching, um, thank you for joining us, and we hope you enjoy the rest of the summit. Right. See you all soon. Great. Thanks, Bye. Andrew.